On our second day collecting out of Njole, we traveled three and a half hours north to the town of Mitzig, then turned west towards the city of Sam, looking for Paranachromus gabonicus. Started each morning with a leisurely breakfast in the local market. If we were lucky, there were eggs enough for omelets. If not, we were stuck with bread, jam, and instant coffee. After breakfast, we would spread out into the market and buy our provisions for the day. As a group, we would buy enough bread and water for everyone to have lunch, and then each of us would buy some other small snack to tide us over. It would be a long time before dinner. The drive to Mitzik was an easy three and a half hours over good roads. To the west of town, we found a lot of agricultural land surrounding small lowland habitats of small streams trickling through dense bamboo thickets. These were not large, but the fauna was diverse. Like everywhere else we had already collected, the waters here were soft and acidic with cool temperatures. Where the road crossed the streams, there were some larger pools, but most of the habitat was too small and too shallow for using the seines. Dip nets produced most of the fish on this day. A lot of the fish that were captured were very small, so a lot of patience was taken to make sure that nothing was missed in the bottom of the net. The drive back to Njole promised to be long and hot, so a lot of care was taken to make sure that the valuable fish were packed correctly. <laughs> the goal is to get these fish back to the USA or to Europe. Taking a few extra minutes now on the stream side will help make sure they survive the trip. This interesting macrobrachium shrimp is one of the animals I made it back from the Mitzik area with. We also caught a lot of these juvenile mormrids, but none of them made it home. We did catch Paranachromus gabonicus. Here is an adult male. This is one of the juveniles I collected that made it back to my home aquariums. I also brought back some tetras, like this Neolabia species, and barbs, like this young Barbus capticanthus. The only killifish I kept from the Mitzig area is Aphia simian camronensis. Our last day collecting north of Ninjole concentrated on larger streams feeding into the O'Connor River. Our target species for the day was Chromitotilapia reagani. Our collecting location for the day was a stream called the Miang. This was not an easy stream to collect fish in. We were so close to the O'Connor River that the water here was deep, fast, and wide. Only the large seine was productive in collecting fish. Big water means big fish. Some of the fish that we caught in this location were committed to Lapia Kingsley. Here's a large male. We caught some nice looking Distichotis and other large tetras. And we managed to find our target species, Chromitotilapia reagani. Since this day trip was a bit shorter, we were able to take some time to do some sightseeing along the O'Connor River. This is one of the larger tributaries of the Agui River system. It is very picturesque and very fast. We also had the opportunity to do a little snapshot shooting at the equator. But some of us kept working. Here is Michael Spider-Man Cedar discovering more spiders in an old log right on the equator. This is not something you like to see just before you get back into an overcrowded 12 passenger van. There is one bridge that crosses the Okana, so we took the opportunity to stop to get some better pictures. Amongst the rocks on the banks of the Okana, there are large growths of crenum plants. A 
A few people found a way down to the river's edge. This gives you a better idea of how big and powerful this river really is. Anton Uberleitner decided that he would climb down and collect some crenums to take home. The Okana River is just another example of the beautiful scenery that can be found in Gabon. If you have the opportunity to go there, you really should. Thank <laughs> you.